I'm in Nehemiah chapter 3. And in Nehemiah 3, you see the man behind this work for God, Nehemiah himself. You see the people working next to each other. And there is an overwhelming amount of work. But you must start somewhere. And I want to use this story to talk about the starting point of rebuilding or building a Bible-believing work where you are. Maybe you and you got some friends, you got some family, and you want to start a Bible-believing work where you're at. You say, well, I don't have uh, any word of fellowship where I'm at. You yourself can start a Bible-believing work where you're at. So Nehemiah chapter 3 and verse 1. It says, Then Eliashib the high priest rose up with his brethren the priests, and they builded the sheep gate. They sanctified it and set up the doors of it, even unto the tower of Mia. They sanctified it unto the tower of Hananiel, and next unto him builded the men of Jericho, and next to them builded Zachar the son of Emery. But the fish gate did the sons of Hassaniah build, who also laid the beams thereof, and set up the doors thereof, and the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. And next unto them repaired Merimoth, the son of Erijah, the son of Kaz. And next unto them repaired Meshulam, the son of Barakiah, the son of Meshazabil. And next unto them repaired Zadok, the son of Bana. And next unto them the Tekoites repaired, but their nobles put not their necks to the work of the Lord. Moreover, the old gate repaired at Jehoiada, the son of Pesiah, and Meshulam, the son of Besodiah. They laid the beams thereof, and set up the doors thereof, and the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. And next unto them repaired Malatia the Gibeonite, and Jadon the Meronothite, and the men of Gibeon and of Mizpah unto the throne of the governor on this side of the river. Next unto him repaired Uziel, the son of Harhaiah of the goldsmiths. Next unto him also repaired Hananiah, the son of the apothecaries. And they fortified Jerusalem unto the broad wall. And next unto them repaired Rephiah, the son of Hur, the ruler of the half part of Jerusalem. And next unto them repaired Jediah, the son of Harumath, even over against his house. And next unto him repaired Hattish, the son of Hashabaniah. And you just keep seeing over and over. Next unto them, that phrase. And next unto them. So the first thing you want to do, the starting point of getting a Bible-believing work going, is you band together. And you get your brethren united to glorify God. That's the purpose. Nehemiah is leading the way. So it started with the man. It has to start with the man getting a burden. And this man has got the brethren working together for a purpose that will glorify God and not himself. So Elisha rose up with his brethren, the priests, in verse 1. And next to him built the men of Jericho. And you have the brethren working toward the same purpose throughout the chapter. Today, men are building up their own glory. You have pastors building and encouraging the people to build, but it's to get the pastor himself a preeminent place, maybe fulfill some self-absorbed fantasy he has in his mind, kind of like a Diotrephes and 3 John 1, 9, and they're forgetting to give God the preeminence. In Colossians 1, 18, it says that in all things he might have the preeminence. So you got the brethren united, and the brethren are united to glorify God. You band together for the purpose of getting God glory. And the preaching needs to build on the faith of the saints, perfecting and edifying the saints. 
that's why God gave us these men, pastors, evangelists, teachers. He says in Ephesians 4.12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, that we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So, the preacher needs to build on the faith of the saints. You need to be brethren united together to glorify God, like-minded, one accord, one mind, with the purpose of keeping the main things, the main things. That way the work doesn't turn into a monument. In Romans 15, 5. Romans 15 and verse 5 says, Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. So you're banded together with the purpose. You get one mind, one mouth to glorify God. Romans 15, 6. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 2. Paul says in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 2, Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. And if you're like-minded, that you need to glorify God, you're of one accord, or you're of one mind, you're glorifying God, then look at Philippians 2, 3, this isn't going to happen. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than himself. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So if you're banded together for the purpose of glorifying God, then there's not going to be things done through strife and vainglory, because you're not doing it for you, you're not trying to be diatrophies, trying to have the preeminence, you're giving God the preeminence, and in lowliness of mind, you're esteeming others better than yourselves because you're not in competition with each other. You're on the same team with the purpose of lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ and not lifting up yourself. Looking not on your own things, but every man also on the things of others. And Jesus Christ was the example. That's why I said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So with the purpose of keeping the main things, the main things, which the main thing is the Lord Jesus Christ. So you band together. You got the brethren united to glorify God beside the next thing, beside one another. Notice that reoccurring phrase in Nehemiah, which says, and next unto him. Back there in Nehemiah, chapter 3, verse 10, it says, And next unto them. In verse 23, it still says, And after him repaired Benjamin and Hashab over against their house. After him repaired Azariah, the son of Messiah, the son of Ananiah, by his house. And then verse 24 says, And after him. You get down to verse 29 and verse 30. In verse 29, it says, After them repaired Zadok. After him repaired also Shemaiah. Verse 30, After him repaired Hananiah. And it just keeps going. And after him, and next unto them, and after him. And notice that phrase, and after him repaired. You see, they were working together towards something. They're side by side, doing the things that would bring glory to God. 
brethren united together, banded together. We need to be side by side. You need to be elbow to elbow because you're all members of the same body anyway. Romans 12 and verse 5 shows you that you're on the same team. Romans 12, 5, so we being many are one body in Christ and every one members one of another. And it, so he says in the next verse, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the portion of faith or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheer, cheerfulness. So you got gifts differing according to the grace given to us, but all these gifts are to glorify God. So you need to be side by side. We should be building a work that exalts the Savior because it's Colossians 1.18, He needs the preeminence. And 1 Corinthians 10.31, 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. You need to keep the light burning in the church for the Word of God. Back there in the Old Testament, they had to keep that light burning. Leviticus 6, 13 says, The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. But what happened over in 1 Samuel 3, 3, And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of God, where the ark of God was, you don't want the light to ever go out. So you band together you got brethren united to glorify god you got you're beside one another you need to brace yourself this is the next thing brace yourself not everyone is into it over in nehemiah 3 and verse 5 it says and next unto them the tech techoites repaired but their nobles put not their necks to the work of the lord Brace yourself, not everybody's going to be into it. They didn't put their necks to the work. The Tekoites repaired, but their nobles put not their necks unto the work. They seem to have ties to the enemy, Tobiah. And they want to stay in good standing with them. Over in Nehemiah 6, Nehemiah 6, 17, it says, Moreover, in those days the nobles of Judah sent many letters unto Tobiah. And the letters of Tobiah came unto them. So they seem to be sleeping with the enemy a bit. And they want to stay in good standing with the enemy. But building a Bible-believing movement is something everyone... It's not something everyone's going to want to do. Not everyone's going to want to put their necks to the work. They will not be like Aquila and Priscilla who lay down their necks for the work over in Romans 16... 3 through 4, Paul's talking about you know, his friends in the ministry. And he said, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their necks, only to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Not everybody's going to be like them. You're going to have some people that don't put their necks to the work. You see, many Christians are more into uh, church politics stuff, church gossip, and things like that, they don't want to put their necks to the work. They don't want to get down and dig deep and stand side by side, elbow to elbow. But if you build with the right thing and then some somebody comes behind you and builds on that, then you stay a movement and you don't just turn into a monument. The next thing, you need to believe in each other. You saw that. And next unto them. And after him repaired. And next unto them. And after him repaired. You see it over and over again. In verse 2 and verse 10. Verse 12. Verse 23. 28. 29. Sometimes it can be hard to put your faith in others. But you must realize that you need each other. 
Okay, so you believe in each other. Put the best men for each job. Look at Nehemiah 3, 2 and 3. It said, And next unto him builded the men of Jericho, and next to them builded Zachar the son of Emery. But the fish gate did the son of Hassanah build, who also laid the beams thereof, and set up the doors thereof, and the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. So you still just notice the phrase keeps occurring, which says, and next unto him, and next unto them. So Nehemiah and the men didn't believe they were the only ones fit for the task. You know, the eye can't say to the hand, I have no need of thee, 1 Corinthians twelve twenty one. And many times the man who starts the movement, in this case, Nehemiah, many times the man who starts the movement believes he's the only one who can do anything at all. And the men he trains think they're the only ones who know anything many times. But what does it say over in 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 2? If any man think he knoweth, if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. But you see, you believe in each other, you get the best men for each job, and also notice how they were having the men build over against their house. Look at Nehemiah 3 and verse 10. It says, And next unto them repaired Jediah the son of Harumath, even over against his house. And next unto him repaired Hattish, the son of Hashbaniah. So over against his house, they had him building. You see, since it was closer to their house, they would take more care in the work. They would do better repairing the wall closer to home. So you get the best men for each job, putting the best men in their proper place. Finding out who fits where. You know, this reminds me of how different people can have different burdens for things. They have different strengths in things. Different talents. Different personalities that would suit certain jobs. Different gifts. You know, have confidence in people that they can do the task and let them do the task that they're most burdened with. You know, a lot of times people use the saying, you know, what would the church be like if everyone was just like you? You know, I get what they're saying, but everybody's just not just like you. Everybody, God made us all different. You know, it says over there in Corinthians, who is he that maketh thee to differ from one another? You know, I get what they're saying, but that wouldn't be good if we're all, we were all just alike because God's got different strengths that he's given people different talents. He's given people different personalities. Has he's given people. So you get the best men for each job. You believe in each other. Putting people in their proper place. And then the next thing, you believe in each other. And then you benefit from women in the work. Look at Nehemiah 3.12. In Nehemiah 3.12 it says, And next unto him repaired Shalom, the son of Halohesh, the ruler of the half part of Jerusalem, he and his daughters. So you benefit from women in the work. Shalom and his daughters took part in repairing in Nehemiah 3.12. And Paul is clear that women aren't to teach or to usurp authority over the man, 1 Timothy 2.12. But there are things they can do better than men. Just because... They're not to teach or usurp authority over the man. That doesn't mean that they can't do all this other stuff. You know, some people think, well, that's all that you can do is just be the teacher or the preacher. No, there's all kinds of other stuff you could do. And Paul was greatly helped by female believers all the time. Like in Romans 16.1, he says, I commended unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Sincrea. In some movements, the 
woman can't even speak or say amen during a study. And I've even heard Baptist pastors uh, get on to a woman for saying amen during the ch church, during the preaching, during the teaching. And many times Baptist pastors see the women as like a second string, but they're still first string, just different duties. You know, not everybody on a football team is the running back, but you uh, you're still first could still be first string even though you're not running back. You see, even though you're not quarterback, even though you're not playing center. There's different things for different people, different strengths people have. You benefit from women in the work, get the best men for each job, believe in each other. And then the third thing, build it sturdy. You'll notice in Nehemiah 3.3 3 and 3.6 3 and 3.13 and 14 and 15, you'll notice over and over how they used bars, beams, and locks. Bars, beams, and locks. If you're going to build a great Bible-believing work, you need to build it sturdy. Let's think about these bars for a minute that they're using. You see, the men had the right equipment to build the wall back sturdy. It's like this with building your Bible study. You lay a foundation and you build a wall of defense. You think about it. You could start by doing an overview of each book of the Bible. I did that a few years back and that's one of the most funnest things most some of the most time well spent things i've ever done doing an overview for each book of the bible and figuring out the bible as a whole that can be like your bars you're building with building it sturdy getting a grasp on the overall concept of the bible and then they mentioned beams you build it sturdy you use bars you use beams Add beams to your Bible knowledge by daily Bible reading and scripture memory. Hiding the word in your heart is like nailing it down in your brain. You got the hammer, you got the nail. The Lord says, is that not my word like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? It's compared to nails like over there in Ecclesiastes. And you're nailing these beams down and these bars down, building it sturdy. Daily reading is like keeping its surety and sturdiness in check. And you need broad walls. In Nehemiah 3.8, it talks about that broad wall. It says, Next unto him repaired Uziel, the son of Harhaya of the goldsmiths. Next unto him also repaired Hananiah, the son of one of the apothecaries. And they fortified Jerusalem unto the broad wall. So it says they fortified Jerusalem unto the broad wall. So it seems Nebuchadnezzar wasn't able to knock down the broad wall. And so they didn't have to repair it, it seems like. He wasn't able to knock it down when he came through and took over. So you make your Bible knowledge like a broad wall. And the way you can do this is to learn the major doctrines of the Bible. The I-O-N words. You learn those I-O-N words, those words, doctrines of salvation, like sanctification, justification, propitiation, imputation, spiritual circumcision, all those words, and the devil or the enemy tries to come and take your salvation, try to talk you out of it. you got a broad wall. They're not going to be able to knock that down. You begin to go verse by verse through the scriptures. A uh, great way to learn the Bible. It takes time, but it's a great way to learn the Bible and build a broad wall that the enemy is not going to be able to take down. It's going to add layer upon layer upon layer that's so thick that the enemy can't knock it down. So you want to build a Bible-believing work you band together, get the brethren united to glorify God. That should be the primary purpose. You get beside one another, bracing yourself because not everyone is into it. 
you believe in each other, get the best men for each job, you benefit from women in the work, nobody's second string, you build it sturdy with bars and beams and broad walls, and it is a challenge, but building a Bible-believing movement is like building the gates. You think about the gates that they go over in this chapter. You got the sheep gate in Nehemiah 3.1. So you're going to have to feed the sheep. This involves study. Then you got the fish gate in Nehemiah 3.3. 3. You're going to have to go fishing for men to have someone to feed. If you're going to have a Bible-believing movement, you're going to have to be able to feed the sheep. You're going to have to be able to go bring sheep in. So there's your fish gate. Then you got the old gate in Nehemiah 3.6. You're going to preach the old book, putting the KJV even before the old ways, even. Don't ask, don't just ask for the old paths, you ask for the old book, and then you straighten the old paths out by the old book, and if the old paths line up with the old book, then you keep it. And then you got the valley gate, Nehemiah 3.13, you'll go through valleys along the way, but you keep going. Then you got the dung gate, Nehemiah three. 14, that's sin and temptations that'll get in the way, maybe even self-righteousness. And what does Paul do with his self-righteousness? What does he say about it? All those things that he was before he was a born-again believer. He said, I count it but dung. That's the dung gate. Sin and temptations get in the way, even self-righteousness, you just count it but dung. Then you got the fountain gate, Nehemiah 3.15. If it's a fountain gate, you preach it freely. Don't make it hard to get. It's like in Revelation 21, 6. Revelation 21, 6, it says, He said unto me, It is done, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. The Lord gives you of the fountain freely. You think about the fountain gate when it comes to building your Bible-believing movement. You preach it freely. Don't make it hard to get just like the Lord would do. Then you got the water gate, Nehemiah 3.26. Keep the main thing the main thing. The Word of God should be the main thing. The Lord Jesus Christ should be the main thing. That's your living water. That's the washing of water by the Word. That's your water gate. Then you got the horse gate and the east gate, Nehemiah 3.28. When, when I think of the horse gate, of course, I think of white horses. And the east gate, you think about, obviously, once again, the second coming. Frequently revisit the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. This, All these things will help you make your Bible-believing movement work properly.